All right, so welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, we're trying to see another tool called iJSON, which is a very nice and powerful tool in case you want to read efficiently large JSON files. So by default, as we saw earlier on, we are different libraries we can use to work with JSON, such as uh, JSON itself. There is all JSON. There is uJSON, right? And there is simple JSON. And in this tutorial, I'm trying to see how to use iJSON to help you in case you are trying to read files, right? That are very large. So the use case is that in case you have a very large file that you want to pass it efficiently without loading the entire content into memory, that is where we use iJSON, right? And it uses generators behind the scene and iterators and then EOS to make it easy for you to efficiently handle large data set. So let me show you how to work with it. So this is our sample data breaking off. We have two, we have this one here, and then we have a nested one here, right? So you can see that if the data is highly nested, you can also use iJSON to read it. So let's start with the basic way, right? So the basic way is that in case you have data and then you want to read, you can just use uh, JSON to read it. So let's see reading files with JSON. With JSON, I don't know whether the audio is echoey, but apologies for that. So I'm going to import JSON, let me make it bigger. And then I can now read that particular file. So open, then let's open that particular file that we want to read. So let's, we have an example file here, which is a jumbo JSON. And I can read it as read, and then as F. Then in case I want to read it, I can spell it as my, let's go to example data, as json.load then f right so this is how to use json to read it and then once i go with this option my data is loaded perfect right but in case i have another format of data that is very huge and i want to read it how do we do that right so in a case like this we would want to read something like that so in using how do we do that so i json to read Right. So the first thing with when you are trying to work with iJSON is that first of all you have to first pass it. Right. There is a pass parser. Right. And then there is uh, the normal reading. Right. So there is a parser and there is an items function. So with the parser you can preview the data. Right. So in case the data is very huge, you can preview it to see how the data structure is like. Right. And then you can now move on with the items to actually read it and you can do your processing so let's see how it works so i'll first of all go here and i'll just go with import uh, json so in case you don't have ijson you can install it on your system with this so pip install ijson perfect and then you can now start working with ijson so if i check it out let's see the various things we can do with ijson so if I check the methods, we have uh, items, a function to help you read stuff. There's KV items, there's pass, pass, async, and the rest, right? But we'll be using items and pass in this tutorial. And let's see how to read our data. So to read it, we can just go, as I said, you have to first of all preview the data first, right? Because the data set may be very huge. And then we can just go with this, so with open, and I have my data here, which is my, uh, let's go with my data too, right? And then I would want to first of all preview it, right? You have to first preview it. And then we do that with, let's call that my parser, which in our case, I'll call that ijson.pass and I'll pass in my F, right? This, I don't know the data, right? I don't know what is there. I want to, it's very huge. I don't want to spend most of my memory. So I just want to pass it and then see what it contains. So we can just go with for uh, preface or parent. It can be parent or preface. And then we have the data type. So we want to see the particular data type that we have. And then the next one is going to be the actual value, right? In parser. So as I said, the parser is a generator and I can now print it out. So I can just print my, let's say, let's go with S string. So I'm using S string in this tutorial. And then 
So the first one is going to be my prefix or parent. So prefix or parent, right? And let's cut like this. And the next one is going to be my data type. So data type. And the next one is going to be my value, the actual value. So I can pass in my value here. And I can pass in my data type here. And then I can also pass in my preface here. Right, so if I run it, now you can see the entire structure of my data, right? And let me explain. So this is one way. So the data set may be very huge. So first of all, you just preview it to see how it is, and then you can now read them one after the other and then process them. So the first array, you can see that the preface is empty and data type, all of this is mostly empty. That is the first iteration, right? And and then the next one comes here. So this is people. So inside our data that we have, if I go back and I check it out, this is my data. We have people, right? And then inside people, we have these names there, right? as you are seeing. So this item here is the one we are seeing here as my people, right? So mostly go with the third one, I prefer the third one, and that's going to give you most of the information. So we have people as the parent or the preface, that is the big item. And then from there we move on. So I can have seen how my data looks like, right? You can go through to see all the rest. If it's highly nested, this is also going to give you a lot of information. Now, having seen that now, we want to read the data itself. So how do you do that? We can just use the with contest. And then I'll just go with this. So instead of pass, I'm no more going to be using pass. I can now go with a different option, right? So there are several ways you can open it. So we now know people. So I can just go with, let's say, my data that I have. And I can just go with my ijson dot items. Then I pass in F. Then now I can pass in the information I had here, which was I had people here, right? So if I go with people, now I can just get people. And then there is this item, which is by default for every stuff. So this item, you can just put it there. And now I can loop through the entire stuff, right? If I run it like this, it has loaded data. You may be thinking that I can do this and get it. It shows you it's an iterator. If I check the type of this particular data, you can see that the data type is Yaji format, right? And there's items there. But if I do list, as you'd have think that this is like an iterator format or a, a generator form, I could get the data. I will not tell you that's what IO operation on closed, right? Because of the format of how we are reading it. So the simplest solution for this is that you should always do your operation under the contest, right? So in case I want to see the data, I can now just go through it and with this option. So I can see that I have all the items there. If I want to read it, I can just say, okay, so this say my data, this is the, so we can call that the JSONs, right? Or any particular data we call it, and we can now look through it like this. So, so uh, item for item in my data, right? And now I can just look through this for, say for J in JSONs, I can now print my J. This is one of the ways of reading. So if I go with this, you can see the entire data of it, right? And this is more efficient because it's using a generator, right? So this is how to read it. So you first preview it to get an overview of how how the data set is, right? With this option here. And we know that we have a people and item and a name. And now we can search for the people and item and we can fetch the data with this option here, right? So you're going to always look through it like this. That is how to read it, right? Very useful. So that is how to do that, right? So in case I have another, if in case I want to get only the names, I can also do the same thing. Not, I don't want to get this entire data set, but I want to get, this is for reading the entire data set. Right? And in case I want to just get only the name, right? only these names, not the entire stuff. I can do the same thing instead of item, I can move on from item to name, right? Because in our preface, we had item name, right? So we can use this option here 
to read it right so item name to read it so we just pass it here so i people item and then move on to the next list right and i can also use this option to read it right so if i go back with the you see that we have gotten only this right that is how to read only this so in case i also want to get the age i'll change it from this option here and then move on to age and now i've gotten only the age right so it is very useful it allows you to be able to go through your data structure if it's nested and pick only what you need and do your processing right so let's see one of the other applications the other application is in case you want to so you could extract specific elements from a JSON file. That's what we saw. In case you are working with a highly nested JSON data, right? This is nested, but not highly nested. But if you go to the highly nested one like this, in which we have employees, then under employees, we have another JSON with uh, like a dictionary with this. And inside the project, we have another one. And this idea we have another one so it's, a, it's highly nested so in case you want to read it you can read it there so let's try it out i can actually use because this file is not huge i can read so read a uh, nested data with json right so i can ha read this data with json so this is two that is the highly nested one i can read it so this is that data right it's highly nested as you can see and there's this again and then there is this so you see, you see how it is very nested right so in case i want to read that particular data i can just go with this option and if i go with example data it works right and i can just look through them because the data set is not big it's kind of like but in case the data set is too huge that is where you can use ijson to help you with that so in that case it will be the same thing we did here as i said you have to always preview it to see the structure so i'll copy this and then i'll use it to preview my highly nested data so let's preview so this is example right if i go back you can see how highly nested the data is right so we have so always go to the third one we have employees as the parent prefix then from from there we have employees items in case i want to get i can just go with the place items then there is employees id there is employees name item employees uh, department and then you can even go there to project right which is quite useful and from here you can now fetch what you want right so i can just go back again with the previous one we did which was this option here and we can use it for our work right so now we had employees this was my example two right just the highly nested one in case i want to get employees right i can just go with employees items and then i can move on from employees items to something else so if i go with employees items and i print out it's like we have gotten the entire data set out right everything that was found here is what is found here right very cool out of the bus and then i can in case i want to even go further and do some processing or whatever i want to do with it i can now go back let's say i want to get the so i want to get employee and i want to get the project and then the tax right i can now move on straight away with employees dot items dot project like that which is here as you could see so there's employees dot items dot project right and there is also employees dot items dot item again and there is tasks which is here right so i can just go with this option here to fetch all the tasks so out of the box i can just read it once so employees 
items, then project item, then tax item, and now I can go back. I only get the task right out of the box, which is more efficient, right? That is how to use iJSON. I hope this video was useful because there's a there is not a lot on this, but I hope you understand. So the basic idea is that with iJSON, it allows you to be able to pass large JSON files without loading the entire content in memory, and it allows you to extract specific elements from a large JSON file or a stream and then do something with it. And in case you are working with highly nested JSON, you can easily work with it, right? So something like this or like this. The first idea is that just like JSON, you can first you must pass it to see the structure of the entire data set, right? Which is this. And then in case you want to read it, you just go with this option with the items, right? And then you can read it like this, or you can just find whatever thing that you wanted. So your nested data structure, right? And you pick that one and then you pass it into it to fetch those ones only. So thank you for watching. See you another time. Stay blessed. Bye. Jesus saves.